Hi, this is Kevin from Big Bear Performance. Have a 2017 Road Glide Touring model. We're going to go ahead and show how to install a inverted front end uh, kit that we make. And I want to start off with the neck stem. Here's the top triple tree, here's the bottom triple tree. We want to take our bearings and we go ahead and make sure that these slide right on, like that. It's just a slip fit. And then we can go ahead and install red Loctite the top of the threads here and go ahead and install that into the triple tree. Make sure you put red Loctite on it and screw it all the way down till it bottoms out. And once it's bottomed out, you've got some flats here where you put a wrench and just tighten that up <coughs> with a wrench. Put your triple tree like this on, the, on a nice soft surface then put a wrench on this and tighten it up. Pretty good, uh, as tight as you can get it by hand uh, without damaging the uh, components here. One of the things I want to talk about real quick is this uh, bearing. If you notice right here, you'll see that this is what's got to button up against the triple tree. And you want this bearing to be able to slide up so that it can slide against the, the triple tree. And the reason for that is because we want this part of the bearing to actually bottom out on the top side of the triple tree, on the underside of the triple tree. I'll show you what I mean. If this was a press fit between the bearing and the shaft, then if we press this on, then, uh, and we bottom out this shaft like this, then we would have a gap there between the bearing and the tree. And what we want this bearing to do is slide up so it's against the triple tree. That's why it needs to be a slip fit over the, the next stem. Okay. Now once we've got that installed, uh, and of course we want to put a dust shield over the top of that, the original dust shield over the bearing. These are the pinch bolts for the triple tree. I don't like to put Loctite on these, what I like to do is actually put Neversees on here so it lubricates the threads. And then we torque these pinch bolts up, once we've got the forks in place we want to torque these pinch bolts up to 25 foot-pounds, no, no tighter, okay? Now, <clears throat> on the 15, 16 and 17 models, our fork stop is actually under the, the tree, and this is the bolt is actually for the fork stop, which screws in right here. We can go ahead and put red Loctite on these, and then tighten them down, all the way down, and make sure that the head is flush with the triple tree. Because on the frame is there's a there's a piece right in the center that's part of the frame that actually acts as the fork stop when you screw these two in. So once we've got that neck tightened up and red lock tightened into the top tree, we want to go ahead and um, put the set screw into the tree here and tighten it all the way in, and that'll actually lock the the, the uh, neck stem. Now that's the top triple tree. We also have a ground right here for your wiring for electrical. And you want to reattach the ground right here on the top of the tree. And right here is our neck lock and ignition switch. Just bolts right into here. No issues there. Nothing to watch out for. Right on the side here, these little uh, threaded holes are for the stock plastic covers to go back on over the triple trees. Moving on to the, the bottom triple tree, for early model Turing models, we have these holes tapped and drilled on both sides. These would actually be the fork stop, okay? So there would be a spacer as well as an Allen bolt that would screw right in here and you would want to red lock tight those in. Again, on the side holes here are for your side covers for your plastic covers. Again, here's your pinch bolts. This is where your adjusting nut goes in and also your set screw. 
on the back here. Once you've adjusted the swing on the front end, then you would set this set screw. Right on the, on the back side of the triple tree here on the lower tree, there's two holes here. And that would be, if you don't have an ABS model, this would be for uh, the brake T, so you could run brake lines off of that. Okay, so on the bottom triple tree, we have these two drilled and tapped holes here. If you didn't use ABS or your bike doesn't have ABS, uh, you'd want to add this brake T right here, which bolts on right here, like that. So then we have uh, this fitting here, which goes up to the top of the handlebars. And then we have a hole here and a hole here for the 90 degree fittings to run down to the calipers on the brake. So that's what those holes are for. That's what our brake T looks like for that, for the non-ABS. Okay, I think that pretty much explains the triple tree. So now I'm going to go ahead and install them on here. So now that we've installed the next stem, the dust shield on the top, and the bearing, making sure that the bearing will slide on the shaft, I want to go ahead and make sure that this is packed with grease. Uh, if your bike's got more than 5,000 miles on it, go ahead and replace these bearings and cups in the frame. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to check to make sure that we have clearance between the fork tube and the top of the frame here. If you can see right here, we we'll make sure the bearings are packed and we've got plenty of grease inside the neck. Go ahead and put that in. So now we, we want to make sure that our fork tubes are going to clear just this part of the frame right here. Just see this edge right here? Okay. And uh, we have to remove about, on the 57, 58 millimeter fork tubes, we have to remove about an eighth of an inch right here on this edge. It's just going to take a grinder, handheld grinder, to remove that little piece there so that our fork stops. Remember we talked about the fork stops being in here? This is where those bolts actually hit on, this fork stop right here on the frame. You see that? Okay, so the way I do it, it's very simple. Put the tree in there, I mean the uh, triple tree on top. Then I come right over the top here and I, and I move it to the fork stop. And I grab a silver tipped pen and I can look straight down the bore here and I can see right where this is going to start hitting if we had a fork tube in there. And I just mark it. All right. And that's how we do it. Okay, can you see how much we've got to remove right here just to make sure that the fork clears? That's all we're talking about here. So a pretty small amount. And we go ahead and we do that on both sides. Just go ahead and remove that eighth of an inch there and an eighth of an inch here, and then uh, we should be all good. Now that we've clearanced the top plate on the frame for the actual fork tubes, you might uh, the question that some people may have is, okay, why do we have forks that are that large diameter? And there's a very good reason for it. These forks are the largest diameter uh, inverted forks that are made on the marketplace with Olean's and any other company for that matter that I can think of. Uh, the reason we want that diameter is because inside these forks is a 30 millimeter piston. It's the largest piston that uh, Olean's makes for the valve inside the fork. And the reason we want that the largest piston possible is it gives us control over an 850 pound motorcycle. And that's the whole key here is having the best suspension possible with the most stability. And the only way to achieve that is to have the largest diameter piston. So that's why we use these 57, 58 millimeter forks, and hence that little bit of clearancing on that top plate is a very small price to pay for the best forks in the world. So then we want to go ahead and we want to install the bottom triple tree. Again, make sure you pack the bearing with grease. And this nut right here, uh, you want to lube it on the inside uh, where it goes over the threads. But you also want to lube it on the outside here. 
where it slides through this uh, triple tree because this is our uh, adjuster, okay? This nut here is our adjusting nut. So we'll go ahead and slide everything up in there. Okay, when we're installing these bearings, we want to go ahead and install the top dust shield, but the bottom dust shield, we want to leave off, okay? We're just gonna leave that off. On our setup, we want to leave that off. Again, we're gonna put some grease on the nut, make sure that's nicely lubed up. See that? And the reason we want that lubed up is because on the bottom tree, it's going to slide right in here, like that, okay? Okay, so now that we've got the uh, triple trees installed onto the frame, I just nipped them up a little bit so that we could actually, now we're actually ready to slide the fork tubes through. One thing you don't want to try to do is actually put the triple trees on the forks and then install everything onto the bike. It's not going to work that way. Because there's a rake in these triple trees, you can never get it together. You have to install the triple trees on the frame first, then you just slide, simply slide the forks to them. Okay, so here we go. Here's the 57, 58 millimeter fork by Olin's, the one that we use for the Touring models. Now that we've got our triple trees mounted on the on the bike, I've put a couple, of, we've put, some, put all the pinch bolts in, just leave them, um, don't tighten them down, of course, because we're going to slide the fork in. Now that the next stem is locked tight in, you can go ahead and put this set screw all the way in which will go all the way in and uh, red, uh, don't red Loctite the set screw just use a blue Loctite or no Loctite at all because all that's there is just a safety precaution to make sure that the next stem is never going to turn but with the red Loctite on the next stem it should never turn anyway uh, so we're going to go ahead and slide this through start from the bottom now you can put these in dry uh, everything should just slide together nicely And as you put these through, you want to rotate everything. See that? Okay, see now we've got this fork tube just slid in real nice and easy. Let me just grab a wrench here. I want you to capture this up here. And I just want you to slide these up to where the top of the fork is even with the top of the tree. Okay? If you look at the top edge, you get it lined up exactly in the same spot with the aluminum or whatever. And then go ahead and just for now, we just want to Tighten up the one side here. Just nip it up so the fork will not slide out. Then we'll go ahead and install the other side. The right fork is if you're sitting on the bike, this is how we refer to left and right. So if you're sitting on this bike, this would be the right fork. And you got the big hole here on the right, and the small hole goes on the left. Okay? So we're just going to go ahead and slide this up through. Grab that fork, Phil. There we go. Now, it's, uh, it's always good to have somebody else with you when you're putting these forks in. So I just loosened that clamp so the triple trees could just 
positioned correctly. And then I could just slide it in and twist it at the same time. And there we go, forks in, okay? So what we want to do is we want to get them to set at the exact same height as each other. And the way you do that is leave, leave the forks loose on the trees and we'll go ahead and we'll install the axle in the bottom and then also check the appearance of the fork uh, on the top tree to make sure they both look dead even. So here's the front axle, go ahead and slide that through. So when working on this front end, of course you never want to use a steel hammer. Always use a plastic bed blow to knock things in. So that axle sliding in there perfectly. Okay. It, it, now I can spin it now that they're lined up. So now I'm good to go ahead and tighten up the top tree. Right now the forks are dead even with each other this way. So that what we want to do now is go ahead and tighten up the top tree only. Okay, just nip that up. Go ahead and install the other two bolts in here so that we uh, have all four bolts in the top tree. Go ahead and torque these bolts to 20 to 25 foot pounds of torque. Leave the bottom bolts here completely loose on the bottom tree. And I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. So now that what I've just done here is I've just adjusted one fork to match the other one. You want to get it so your axle slides through like that. And believe you me, there's only a couple of thousands clearance between these bottom of these forks and this axle. So that tells me that everything's lined perfect. Then you can go ahead and torque these bolts up. Okay, so what we're going to do now is install the front wheel. Now this wheel just happens to be a carbon fiber wheel, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, as far as what we're discussing. Uh, we've installed the rotors onto the wheel. I think that's very self-explanatory. You've got your bolts right here. They don't need to be any more than 40 foot-pounds of torque, 35 foot-pounds of torque, as these bolts, uh, the, the force on them is a sheer, sheer force. Okay, now we've got the rotors installed. There's two bearings. Uh, this is an ABS unit. You've got a blue bearing here or a black bearing. Uh, stock bearings from Harley are black. This one happens to be blue. If you look on the other side, you'll notice there's a white bearing. You see this white bearing? This is what they call an ABS bearing. This bearing is a special bearing that must go against the ABS unit, and the ABS unit sits on the left-hand side of the bike. And so we'll go ahead and get this wheel up in here. On the uh, right side of the bike, we have the axle with this uh, aluminum end on it. And that aluminum end is actually going to be the wheel spacer. See that? You see how the aluminum spacer is slid all the way through against the bearing? And on the other side, against our ABS bearing, we're going to install the ABS sensor, which slips right in here. We want to go ahead and install the fender mounts. These are the metric bolts here, so you're going to need a metric Allen wrench for these bolts. The majority of the tools that you'll use on this are American tools, but these bottom pinch bolts and these bolts right here are metric, so make sure you use metric Allen wrenches for those. On top here on our triple trees are American, because this is on an American bike. So we'll just go ahead and we've red loctited these bolts and we'll just go ahead and install them. Now, with these fender mounts here, they're designed for two purposes. One is for the fender, the other one is to uh, protect the fork tube itself 
from rock chips and stones and so forth which would ruin the steel so you want to look at down at the top here and you can see there's a little bit of movement from side to side in this before we tighten the bolts if you can look down here we just want to make sure that the circumference of the uh, fork guard is in line with the outer fork tube we'll go ahead and tighten that up right there Okay, can you see the clearance all the way around here? They're perfect. They have about 50 thousandths clearance all the way around the fork. You'll also notice that um, these fork mounts in the front here that also act as a, as a guard. Obviously this, you've got two small metric bolts in here that can't take a lot of weight and nor should they. So this mount right here bolts onto our caliper right here this is our other uh, fender mount and this is a very very strong mount that's going to bolt to the fender hold the fender in place there's two great big bolts that go in here that are metric that go into the lower part of the fork and that's what's actually stabilizing the fender this the front bolt here is just literally just holding the front fender up into position this back brace here does all the work for the uh, for the front fender and believe you me we've tested this i've done thousands and thousands of miles with this design and uh coming down from 12 o'clock wheelies on a on a touring model we've certainly tested the, our fender mounting system it's a very good design okay so here we go this is our caliper make sure you remove the uh, paper that uh, piece of wax cardboard in here that holds the pads apart. You go ahead and install the caliper. You want to red lock tight these bolts. Uh, in the kit you'll have a flat washer that goes right here against the rear fender bracket. There's your bleeder right there. Go ahead and torque these down to uh, 30 foot pounds each with red Loctite. And so now this side, we're uh, just waiting for the ABS unit to come back. And so this is how it's going to be done. And our fender will fit right in here and line up with these bolt holes. Okay, just we offer um, this is for a 19 inch wheel. This is the stock fender. We also offer a fender that sits really close to the tire that's out of carbon. But just for right now, we're just going to throw this fender in and show you that it lines up with the fender mount. Okay, and there you have it. Okay, so everything lines up perfectly. We're just going to throw the ABS sensor in here, then we'll be talking, and then we'll go through the talking sequence of the bottom axle. But as you can see, how the fender bolts up, just two Allen bolts, very simple. Uh, red Loctite on these fender bolts, please. Red Loctite here. Red Loctite on these main bolts here on the calipers. Uh, 25 to 30 foot pounds on these big bolts, uh, no more than 35 foot pounds. Um, 20 foot pounds, 25 foot pounds on these with red Loctite. And then we want to 
on the bottom bolts here, they're metric Allen bolts. We want to go to about uh, 20 foot pounds on these to 25. And on this main bolt here that holds the axle in, uh, will holds the, uh, the end of the axle, we want to go to about 55 foot pounds on that one. And over here, we want to make sure that we red lock tight this aluminum cap that screws onto the axle and uh, put the axle in a vise with uh, aluminum jaws and put a pin through here and tighten that up. It doesn't have to be super tight, it's just got to be red lock tighted so it won't unscrew. We've just installed the ABS unit. We machine the ABS unit down to 712 thousandths so it sets our wheel in the correct spot for the rotors so that the, the calipers and rotors line up perfectly and here it is right here and that's part of your kit is to get one of these. Then you go ahead now that this is set, go ahead and put this nut in on the end here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, you can lock tight this in. One thing I would just want to say, uh, if you look at this, the end of this axle is just slightly below the surface here of the bottom of the fork. That's what you want to see. You go ahead and install this. So we'll just go ahead and tighten this down. This is an inch and an eighth wrench here. Or you could use a crescent wrench if you wanted to, a nice big one that's strong. So we'll just go ahead and we'll just nip this up. Now the bottom of the fork bottoms are actually loose on both sides. We're just going to make sure we can just pull this through. There we go, nicely. Then we're going to go ahead on both sides and torque these bottom pinch bolts on both sides of the fork bottoms. And then we can come in here after that's done and put our 55 foot-pounds of torque on this axle. And that's it. And then we just need to go ahead and bleed the brakes, put the fittings in, 35 degree, 35 degree fittings go right in here between the fender and the rear uh, fender bracket. And then you run your lines up with the supplied lines that we give you. Over here on this side, these are the two, here's your ABS unit right here. And it's this, this line here is gonna take a straight fitting that goes straight. And this one here is going to take a 35 degree. And these are the two lines right here that go all the way up to the front calipers. So on the ABS unit here, this is your left, this is your right calipers. And this one here is for your hand control, your front brake master cylinder right here. And that's it. You run those lines up there, everything is sweet. All right? Okay, on the fork up here, Inside this nut here, okay, is a this is on the right side is your rebound, and you want to tighten that down righty tighty, and back it out exactly six clicks on the right hand side, which is your rebound. Do the same thing over here, but back it out eight clicks, which is compression. This nut right here, this silver nut, is a nine sixteen or fourteen millimeter. Just go ahead and tighten that down. Make sure it's tightened all the way to the right. We've already installed 12 newton meter springs in these forks to, to uh, give the bike the correct sag rate for an 850 pound uh, touring model. So all you need to do is tighten these all the way down. It's going to give us around 39, 40 millimeters of sag, which is perfect. So when adjusting the front end for the swing, or on a regular front end it's called fall away, but on a, on a touring model it's called swing. You want to, on your final adjustment, once everything's together, you want to push it over to the fork stop and then let it go and it should swing right back to dead center. You could go a little bit past, but that's what you're looking for. Let go of it and it comes right back to center. That's the correct adjustment on the neck bearings. And then go ahead and lock your set screw to your bottom nut once you've achieved that. Okay, so why use an inverted front end? Well, the truth of the matter is uh, upside down fork just seemed to work better and the reason for that is that the outside diameter here, this 57, 58 millimeter, the sheer diameter of this fork, even though it's light, adds a tremendous amount of rigidity. And in a front end you want rigid. 
The larger the diameter of the fork, the more rigid from flex that it will have. Uh, it won't be susceptible to flex. But other than that, a fork is a fork, and what makes a fork special is the valving on the internal of the fork. Having control over the movement of the wheel is what gives you stability in a motorcycle. And that pretty much wraps it up.